Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to worship at uh, West Missionary Church this morning. Uh, this is the last day of the year, and uh, it gives us the opportunity to end the year right, being together here, worshiping our Lord. Really glad you're here. For those joining us uh, by a way of electronic means, uh, Lord, the Lord may bless you as well, and uh, we're glad that you are, are with us in that way. <clears throat> Just a few things that uh, we need to be reminded of this morning. Remember to stop, stop by the uh, Christmas card exchange booth that's in the North Foyer to pick up any remaining Christmas cards from the West Missionary Church family to you. Uh, we'd very much appreciate it if you would take care of that uh, this morning. Stop by and pick up uh, those cards. The uh, church numbered envelopes for uh, 2024 uh, are in the West Foyer. Uh, if that's uh, your means of of giving and keeping track of that, uh, we would encourage you to use to use one of those. If you do not have to find your name on one of those uh, sets of envelopes, uh, we would encourage you to see Scott or Jill Bollenbacher or Jim or Donna Roth. Uh, we would encourage you to have your 2023 giving finalized by today. Uh, this is the last day of the year. Uh, contribution reports for 2023 will be sent out in January. Men's breakfast this Saturday, 7 o'clock at Burn Dining. Uh, we would encourage you to keep the West Missionary Church youth and their leaders in your prayers. Uh, they are at a conference and uh, they're going to be staying, they, they stayed overnight one extra night. Uh, and I appreciate this. Josh, Josh did not want to have the kids out driving on the highways on New Year's Eve. There's a lot of crazies out there. And uh, so in order to be safe, they, they stay in an extra night. They'll be coming home tomorrow morning. But we encourage you to, to be praying for them. Uh, he said it's been a great experience the whole time. And uh, continue to pray also that they will grow in their faith and in their walk with Christ. We would also like to mention, as much as we don't like to, that it is winter, and along with winter comes weather, and uh, there are some occasions where we cancel services here to protect your safety. Um, on the Welcome Center, there is a sheet of paper for you to sign up if you want to be contacted by text or by phone. You can also go to our Facebook page and you will find there if we are canceled or not. The bulletin says check with uh, WZBD and, and you're welcome to do that, uh, but our primary sources would be text, phone call, or our, our Facebook page. So we encourage you to kind of be aware of that and if you would like a, a call or a text, uh, if you would sign up at the Welcome Center. This morning, I am uh, very pleased to announce that the Church Council has offered and Jamie has accepted a call to be part-time worship pastor here at West Missionary Church. Uh, we're so, so thankful and I know you've enjoyed his music over the, the past several weeks, but I would like for you to get to know him just a little bit better. So, Jamie, if you'd come and we're going to put you on the hot seat here. Okay, we are, we are truly excited about the uh, bringing you on board and, and what you can bring to West and, and your, 
your commitment to uh, worship and worshiping Christ. But let's, uh, let's start just by asking you about your family. Tell us about your family, and uh, I think it's, it looks like they're here. My wife, Beverly, we've been married for 23 years, and um, she's originally from Nebraska, went to John Brown University. She teaches at uh, Adams Central. She's their sixth grade science teacher, and for many years, for the last couple of years, she's done that, but before that, she used to teach fifth grade. Nobody else wanted that position. She grew to love it. <clears throat> I have uh, uh, two boys and a girl. Uh, our oldest is Reagan. She just recently turned 21. She's getting married to her fiance, who's here uh, today. They're getting married in June, Cade uh, Bechtold. And he's, uh, you know, we love him all the same, but went to Whitco High School. So <laughs> I originally graduated from Wawasi, and so Wawasi and Whitco had that, you know, love hate thing going on um no they, they, they there's no hate there but uh so uh, Cade went to anderson and my my daughter's going to anderson right now she's a junior um and then i have my son hudson um he's sitting back with um Aiden. 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 Yeah, yeah yeah hobbs sitting with hobbs yeah, that's right hobbacker and uh, he is a freshman uh, at anderson studying computer science cybersecurity. And so he's enjoying his time at Anderson as well. They're both legacies there uh, since the school inception. And I have my youngest boy, Jensen. He is eighth grade. Uh, he's 13. And so they all reached milestones this year. He, ch he got into officially into his teen. Hudson got officially 18. He got officially into his teens. And Reagan turned 21. So that's my okay. immediate family. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, would you just uh, briefly tell us about your salvation experience and your walk with the Lord? Um, I grew up in the church most of my life. My grandfather was a minister, and, and so, you know, that's what you did Wednesdays and Sundays and Sunday nights and all those other days of the week that nobody else filled. The church filled it. And so, um, you know, when you grow up in church, you know, sometimes don't realize why you're there. You just go because that's just what you do. And so for that, I thank my parents. Um, but then you come to that realization where their salvation is not yours. And so you go to um, youth camps and you have, you know, your mem scripture memorization. I noticed that they have Awanas here. Um, so, uh, you know, we had our Wednesday night, you know, sort of thing. But uh, I got that moment where I really felt like, you know, I just really had to get that, um, make that my own. And so when I was 10 years old, I was at youth camp up at Silver Lake, the Yellow Creek Lake Camp is the Church of God camp up there. And um, I gave my life to Christ there. Um, it's Thursday evening, and, and then, uh, you know, later that summer, I was baptized in August. I was 10 years old, and I remember I was really, really scared. And I don't know why I was scared. I just was because I was just making that profession of faith. But, um, you know, you get baptized, and, and, and you're saved at 10. You really haven't been tested. And so there have been those moments um, where, you know, you really have that, that temptation to just kind of just walk away and not ever walk back but the lord's really been faithful um to me and uh, really um I've, I've really had a strong base of a family base that has kind of kept me rooted in the church so when i wanted to walk away i really couldn't so um you know god's really been faithful to me through through many many trials and tribulations physically and spiritually but uh yeah so my conversion was at 10 I'd say probably about the time I was uh, a junior or senior in high school, I really kind of said, okay, this is, this is the path I want to go for, I want to go to. So I went to Anderson, and I'll kind of follow up because sure. you're going to ask me. I attended Anderson University and um, didn't know really what I was going to do, but they were giving me scholarships to do music. And so my, one of my instruments that I play uh, is saxophone. That was actually my uh, carry. Um, that was actually one of my... Uh, instrument they gave me scholarships for. I traveled around Europe for a couple years, two, three years, and, and I was in the vocal groups there, and um, I really didn't want to be in ministry because I'm, I'm a fifth generation minister in a church. And so I'd go to these reunions, and I would listen to how all this awful stuff happens when you're a pastor, Keith. And so I'm like, I would get up and leave, and I'd go, you have to be an idiot to be a pastor in a church. Well, I guess I just decided I wanted to be an idiot later on. I don't know. But um, actually, actually, I, uh, I was in the business, school business there at Anderson, and they kind of brought me back. I was 
I ended up being a music business major, so I got my, my ma major in business. And while you're there and you get your music major, they also teach you how to play piano. Because my mom always played piano for us. We were a uh, singing family. My dad played trumpet and sang, and my mom, Steve Zirker knows, I and mean, my dad, they went to school together at Wallace C. And um, I actually had Steve's dad, um, Vernon Zirker, as my history teacher. He is my favorite teacher in school. And I'm not just saying this because Steve goes here, but I really did. I look forward to seeing him every day. So, uh, so anyway, so I learned how to play piano to get my degree. And then as I, um, the Lord called me into ministry, it was just kind of one of those moments where you just say, okay, I'm just going to go. And so um, he, he took us out to Hutchinson, Kansas. We were there for a couple years. It seemed like 10. We left there. We went to, um, to, uh, to uh, Missouri, and we were there for over 10 years. And then uh, we moved back here to, to Indiana. We've been in Indiana for over 10 years in Decatur. So it's been a, it's been a wonderful time. But uh, in the midst of doing worship ministry, sometimes you're called to do things that you didn't go there initially to be able to do. So I had to hop over on the piano and lead, and it just kind of evolved from there. So I just kind of, that's kind of my secondary instrument. Saxophone is my, my main instrument. Okay. Uh, let's, let's just uh, conclude with a few quick answers. <laughs> Your favorite pro football team? I picked up the sarcasm, Keith. Um, uh, <laughs> the Oakland slash Los Angeles slash Las Vegas Raiders. And I only chose them because when I was young, I liked their silver and black and the little man on the helmet. So, yes, I, the Raiders. Okay. How about favorite pro baseball team? The Yankees. Reggie Jackson. Okay. <laughs> Favorite university? Nebraska. Um, for obvious reasons, they don't have any other pro teams in Nebraska, so my wife came out of her mom's yelling, Go Big Red. So we, I've been rooting for Nebraska since 1998, 1999. So I'm a Husker fan. Okay, I can identify with that. Yeah, Go Big Red. Yeah, yeah. I was back in Osborne's days. And Tom Osborne. Yeah. Dr. Tom. Yeah, and uh, Jared also has connections with Nebraska. All right, uh, your favorite auto and truck brand? Chevy, my grandfather drove a Chevy Silverado. <laughs> I think it's still running, I it rusted out, but the engine's still running, so. All right, we'll overlook that one. Okay. <laughs> favorite ice cream? Pistachio almond, I love the pistachio almond. I will get it anytime I go. I had it for the first time when I was in Europe. And I, I can't eat this stuff anymore, so he's gonna ask me this stuff, but it was pistachio almond. Go ahead. Okay, uh, favorite pizza? Pizza King. Okay. Grew up on the squares. Burn Pizza King is better than Decatur's Pizza King. Okay. Not Favorite pie? You threw me a curveball there. My favorite pie is apple pie. I, apple peach, I, it's Thai, apple and peach, and I like the little sugar on top, even though I can't eat it. Uh, but I noticed in here you said, do you like pumpkin pie? And, and my question should have been, you don't like pumpkin pie, do you? Well, I like a little pumpkin pie to go with my Cool Whip. <laughs> okay. I mean, so you don't see it. <laughs> okay. What In else? fact, you can just take the whole container and just stick a piece inside of it, and I can eat it. <laughs> Why say no? Uh -uh. <laughs> so what, what else would uh, you like for us to know about you? Listen, um, I'm passionate about worship because I believe that we were created like, we're created like worship beings to worship Jesus. He created us to worship him. So... Um, I want to let you guys know it's, it's, it's an active, it's a participation that you have to, you, I mean, it's an, it's, I call it participation sport. It's something you must do. And there's different postures of worship. But I want to tell you that I mean, we just got to leave it, at the, leave it at the feet of Jesus every week. Whatever you've come in with, whatever burdens you have, whatever, um, just enjoy that God's given you during the week. 
that joy and that, that salvation or that, that excitement, don't harbor to yourselves. Give it to him. And I honest to goodness, I, will, I honestly believe this. I've come in on Sundays, and believe it or not, pastors do this. They come in. They don't always have peachy weeks, right? They come in on Sunday morning. But however you feel, I tell this to the team, however you're feeling that day, when you get done worshiping Jesus, whatever you were worried about, you are not worried about it anymore. You cannot worship and you cannot worry at the same time. So I want to encourage you, whatever we do, it might not be the song you might like. It might not be a, I love all different types of music I do. Um, I understand I've been through that. I've, I've been through the, the, the worship deal. But man, I'm telling you, whatever it is, if you're worshiping Jesus and he is your subject, you can't go wrong. You absolutely can't go wrong. So I, want, I just want to let you know that I love worship and I want you to worship with us. And I want you to worship at the feet of Jesus. When you leave here, you leave differently than when you came. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, would you welcome Jamie? got me on there we go came across this and some of you probably have already heard it several different weeks it's been out for a few years but uh i just love the words to it i love the declaration and what you're going to learn is there's different forms of worship there's horizontal where you sing about god and then there's vertical where you sing to him um this is going to be one of those that we're going to sing about who god is this is called this is our god and uh, we'll get all set and uh, worship with us.
give praise to our Lord this morning, church.
You may be seated. At this time, would the ushers please come forward to receive our tithes and offerings? As they do, the children, it's the fifth Sunday of the month, so ages two, three, and four can go to their service today. Two, three, and four-year-olds. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we know you never change. You are the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And as we approach this new year, we just pray for your blessings on it, Lord. We just pray that you would bless this offering. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, uh, this morning we have uh, someone's friends, me, and we play together here in the area, and he's from the town of Burner, works down at the Kubota place. His name is John Osborne. Will you welcome John on the set this morning, on the drum set this morning? Make him feel welcome. One thing you know about John, he is all worship. He is all worship. I came across this, and if you're fighting a battle this morning, just remember, it's not your battles. If you're a believer and you're a follower of Christ, it's his battle. The battle belongs to him. Count us off, John.
Amen. I think Scott's going to come up here. I've been asked to read uh, Philippians uh, 3, 12 to 16. Not that I have already obtained all this or I have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. So shall we pray? Our Father, we just come before you today and we're so thankful that we can come and worship you today. Father, um, this past year, many of us have experienced joy and sadness and loss. But through it all, Father, you've been faithful to us, and we know that you will be faithful to us in the coming year. And we just would pray for, for the blessing on this church and the pastors and the ministry that the church has in this coming year that we might bring you honor and glory in all that we do. In your name, amen. I mean, you know, in the times of David and the if you read the scripture verses and you're a Bible scholar at all, you would know that when they fought battles, the choir went out front. The musicians were fighting on the front lines, singing praise to Jesus. When they fought the battle of Jericho, it wasn't with swords. It was with praise. You are here, moving in a man. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing a church. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, yeah, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness.
working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop did you believe that sin even when i don't see it you come on church sing even when i don't feel it you're when he's there you never stop you never stop when he's there you never stop you never stop working. Mom. even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working one more time sing it never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you never stop you never stop working never stop you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are you sing it here we go you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are 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 you are here turning lives turning lives around i worship Mending every heart, I worship you. I worship you. Blessed are you who are downhearted, tired and weary, and in need of something more. Blessed are you who have had a tough year or season, perhaps filled with ups and downs, sorrow and sadness, misery and mistakes. You are not alone. Blessed are you whose dreams have been interrupted, stomped on, or perhaps just taking too long. There is a new thing right around the corner. Blessed are you who don't know what to believe, or why you are here today. But despite that, you keep pushing forward. Blessed are you who are walking through seasons of prosperity and joy. Celebration and hope. For you have found something truly worthy of sharing. You see, sometimes life is just hard, but blessed are those who seek the Lord in the midst of that darkness. For there is hope, real tangible hope found in Him. So today, May you be reminded that you were created on purpose and for a purpose. May you know that God has big plans for you. Plans to prosper you. And not to harm you. May you walk in truth and light so that no matter where you go, you will have a light onto your path. May you find rest free from anxiety. And may his love which is never ending and his grace which is never failing follow you wherever you may go. For he has come to make all things new. A backward glance. Notice it is a glance. It is not a long, prolonged look but rather a glance. We can get in trouble if we uh, look back too much, if we look behind us too much. When Cindy and I were married about a year, I invited a coworker to come and attend church with us. 
he was kind of a, a, a rough character, but uh, he needed the Lord, and uh, he agreed to come on a particular Sunday. And so after Sunday school, I went out into the, the lobby, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited some more, and Art didn't show up. It was time for the service to start, and so I thought, well, I better go in and sit down, and I went and walked up the aisle and sat down beside Cindy. Scooted, she scooted over a little bit, and I thought, oh, good, she sat near the aisle, so I can uh, get up and find Art. So the whole time I was sitting there, I was looking behind me. I was looking and watching out in that foyer area to see if Art would show up. Because if he did, I knew he was going to be uncomfortable, so I wanted to get up and go and uh, meet him and, and bring him in to sit with us. Well, a few minutes into the service, I felt this tap on my shoulder. And somebody whispered to me, your wife is back there. I sat down with the wrong woman. <laughs> you can get a lot of trouble looking behind you too long and too much. To this day, I'm thankful that I did not absentmindedly just put my arm around her. <laughs> Art never did show up that day, but that's what happens when we look back and we look back too long. You know, our vehicles have something in it we call a rear view mirror. And by the way, that is a Ford mirror. <laughs> and we can get in trouble if we look in that mirror too long too, can't we? Because we're likely to run over something, run into something. It's important that when we look back, it is a glance, a brief look, and then we return our attention forward. On this New Year's Eve day, I thought it would be good for us to take a brief backward glance, to learn from the experiences of the past, the experiences of 2023, and thank God for his faithfulness. A quick glance, not a long gaze. We cannot go back and change the things that happened in 2023, but we don't get any do-overs, we also cannot rest upon the successes of the past year. If we insist on living in the past, we will fail in the future. But yes, we can learn from the past in order to avoid mistakes of the past and repeat the successes in the future. Here are just a few things that happened in 2023. Some of us experienced illnesses, some of which were or continue to be very serious. Some of us had life-changing surgeries. Some of our loved ones passed into eternity. Some of our family members got married. Some family members were added as God blessed with children, with babies. We searched the scriptures for guidance and encouragement. We supported missionaries around the world. We supported persecuted Christians in Myanmar. We enjoyed vacations with our families. We enjoyed fellowship opportunities and carry-in meals. We enjoyed guest speakers. We enjoyed youth fundraisers like date night, potato bar, and fish fry. We exposed Satan's lies. We saw LifeWise start up and begin to touch the lives of school children. 
We saw the revival of the women's ministry. We saw the need and the benefits of the Care Connections ministry. We celebrated 125 years of God's faithfulness on August 27th. Wasn't that a fantastic day? We celebrated God's blessings on Thanksgiving and the birth of our Savior at Christmas. Just a few things as we look back on a previous year. From there, may we learn and lean on God for what comes next. As we look forward, I think we can learn a lot from the Apostle Paul's brief backward glance in Philippians chapter 3. The Apostle writes, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. From this passage of Scripture, we can glean several things that we can apply. First of all, the Apostle Paul said, I haven't already arrived. This was the Apostle Paul, a giant in the faith. He was called to be an apostle. He was set apart from birth. He went through various experiences of life. He sat at the feet of Gamaliel, probably the greatest teacher of his time. He persecuted the church. He persecuted Christians. When they stoned Stephen, those who were stoning him put their garments at Paul's, then known as Saul's, feet. This guy wrote much of the New Testament. His status is unquestioned. In fact, part of what he is doing in Philippians chapter 3 is establishing his credibility. There apparently were individuals going around telling everyone how great they were and that they should, uh, everybody should listen to them. And Paul said, well, they may claim this and that, but if you look back a few verses earlier in chapter 3, you'll see that Paul lays out his credentials. And they're amazing. This is the Apostle Paul, and he's saying, I have not already arrived. And I think it's important that we, as we look back at, on 2023, and as we, we examine our lives where we're at now, that we also understand with humility, we have not yet arrived. We may have served the Lord for many years. We may have accepted Christ at a young age and are now old. But the Apostle Paul said, I, not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. We never reach that point where there is no farther to go, no more to grow in our relationship with God. The Apostle said, I haven't arrived yet. Number two goes along with it. Because I haven't arrived yet, it's an indication that I still have room for growth. 
And the apostle wanted to continue his relationship with God. He wanted to continue to, to grow in that relationship, to know more of who God is, and to become more and more like him. Notice how he frames this. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. As Paul realized that he still had room to grow and he still wanted to move forward in his relationship with God, we find the indication that this is not always easy. He said he pressed on. That's an indication of effort. He talks about straining toward what is ahead. Straining. Many scholars think that he had the Olympic Games in mind and perhaps a wrestling match in which every fiber of a, a, a wrestler's being is thrown into that battle. And the Apostle Paul is saying, I strain to move forward, to become more like Jesus Christ. I haven't already attained, I haven't already gotten there, but I'm moving forward with everything that I have to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward. What was Paul wanting to take hold of? What was the goal? What was the prize? All of that has to, be, has to do with becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. As we look at our lives, may we also understand it is not our job to come and sit in our perfectly blue, padded, air-conditioned, heated pews and float into heaven on billowy clouds of ease. The Christian life, if, if, you, if you don't know it, you, you, you've got a lot to learn. If you don't know it, the Christian life can be really tough. And sometimes there are growing pains that are very painful. But the Apostle Paul determined that he was going to go for it. He had not already attained all this. He hadn't already arrived. He had room for growth. He also realized that I got to stop looking behind me to move forward effectively. Forgetting the past. Forgetting the past, basically meaning move on from the past. Don't live in the past. He indicates that this is the mature way of, to view things, and if you don't think so, God will reveal this to you as well. He understood that he had to leave the past in the past. That's really important for us right now. Sometimes we think of the past and we think it was the good old days. And we want to go back to the good old days. And sometimes I look back and I think, man, we've really had it pretty good back then. But we can't relive those days. God has placed us at this point, at this time. And he has work for us to do. 
and He has things for us that He wants to accomplish in our lives, we have to move forward. I don't think we disrespect the past, but we've got to move on from it. We have to live today. None of us has lived today before. We're living it now. Sometimes the past can hold us back. Sometimes our failures come and they they haunt us. And sometimes people won't let us get up and, and, and move forward and get over the past and, and we're, they continually remind us of our past failures. If you've confessed your sins before God and have received His forgiveness, it, it's okay to move on. Sometimes we have things that we, uh, people have offended us and, and we still have not forgiven them and those things pull us back and hold us back. It's time to move on. And fourth, I have to make sure that I move forward, not backward. A couple years ago, we had the uh, kind of the motto, everyone grows at West Missionary Church. I don't know if you remember that, but everyone grows at West Missionary Church, and it's still true today. Everyone grows. Some people grow in their faith, and they grow stronger in their faith. Some people grow weary in well-doing, some grow bitter, some grow angry. That too is something from the past that needs to be put in the past. And we need to forgive as Christ has forgiven us. Paul said, I've got to make sure that I move forward, not backwards. It's important that we not give up the ground that we have already gained. You are not in the same place as you were at the beginning of the year. You're either farther along in your relationship with God or you have fallen back. We don't stay stationary. So that's that's Paul's brief look back. When you take a a quick glance back at 2023, what do you see? <clears throat> what do you see in your life? Do you see that there are some things that continue? And maybe some things to discontinue? You know, as we look at where West Missionary Church is going to go in the next year, there are some things that we will continue and there are some things that we will discontinue. It's more comfortable just to continue as you were. But maybe God doesn't want us to do the same things that we did last year. Maybe we need to check with Him and stay close enough to Him to know what He wants us to do now. Maybe it will be the continuation of what we are doing now or maybe something different. Maybe it will be a continuation of what we are doing now but done a different way. You know, we see that sometimes uh, in the scriptures. God doesn't always do the same thing in the same way. One time, God told Moses to speak to the rock Another time, God told Moses to strike the rock. We have changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament. We even have change in our own lives from old creatures to new creatures. We grow. Whatever we do in 2024, we'll know that it has something to do with reaching and teaching our world for Christ. And I want us never to forget that. And if I were to come and ask you, what's West Missionary Church all, you know, what's, what's, what are we all about? I hope that you would respond by saying, reaching and teaching our world for Christ. And for those of you who haven't been here for, uh, you know, a long period of time, 
That is why West Missionary Church exists, to reach and teach our world for Christ. As we go into the next year, that does not change. That is our commission. It is our mission. It is our purpose. When we look at uh, a new year, a lot of times we, we talk about resolutions. And I know a lot of you don't like to make resolutions because you know you're just going to fail. Well, it's also true that if you aim at nothing, you're sure to hit it. And I think we need to not be afraid to make resolutions and determinations. And if we do fail, that we get back up and we get back on that bike and we start down that road again. If it's worth it, if it's something God wants us to do, don't quit. You fail, get up, start going again. You know those little pieces of paper that are in the, in the pews ahead of you? I would suggest that maybe you take those and instead, you know, if your kids haven't used them all, and if I draw in pictures and all, uh, if maybe you write down these seven resolutions. The first one is spend time with God every day. If you fail one day, don't quit, don't give up, get up and get started again. You say, well, I'm too busy to spend time with God every day. Well, what do you have, <laughs> what do you have to do each day that's more important than spending time with God? You know, really? If you go through a day and you do not spend time with God, everything else that you did that day has become more important to you than spending time with God. I have determined that when I get up in the morning, I will not eat. I will not eat until I spend time with God. And I obviously like to eat. Now, have, have I failed at that? Sure. Sure. Sometimes the schedule has, has so that I eat and then I do make time later, but that has helped, helped me a lot. Secondly, memorize a verse of scripture for 2024. Find one that's meaningful to you, memorize it. Our Awana program is amazing. You know, the kids in the Awana program memorize so much scripture. And that's one of the reasons why we chose the program. I thought about having some of them stand up and put the rest of us to shame. <laughs> but you might say, well, that's for kids. You know, I'm, I'm too old. I'm too old. My mind doesn't work quite as well. Maybe it would work better if you'd memorize scripture. <laughs> My father in his old age. Took to the task of memorizing large portions of scripture. For two reasons. One, he was afraid he was going to lose his eyesight and not be able to read. And secondly, because he believed it kept his mind sharp. Memorize a verse of scripture for 2024. Forgive someone who has offended you. If no one comes to mind, don't worry. Someone will offend you in 2024. Decide now that you'll forgive whoever for whatever offends you, just as in Christ God has forgiven you. Four, invite someone to church. Oh. Invite someone to church. CT training, church training group did a survey and uh, s 
70 to 85 percent, that's quite a span, were in church because they were invited by a relative or friend. You know, a lot of people say that's, that's my job, that's pastor's job. Eight to 10 percent are in church because they like the pastor. I'm a little offended by that, but. <laughs> 70 to 85 percent invi were invited by a, fam by a relative or friend. Billy Graham Association issued a statistic that said the average Christian can identify seven unchurched people that they have a personal relationship with. They conducted a national survey that said 82 percent of non-Christians, I'm sorry, of non-churched say that they would come to church with a friend or relative if they were invited. What's holding us back? Is it because it's just us and, you know, if they come, they need to sit with us and I sit with my friends. My circle is complete. Invite someone to church. Number five, lead someone to Christ. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you think over the course of 365 days, maybe we could pray with someone to accept Christ? You know where that starts? That starts by saying, God, please, Give me the opportunity. Give me the opportunity. And I want you to think of your Heavenly Father when you come to Him and say, give me the opportunity. I want you to think of Him looking down at you and saying, no, I don't think so. Does that make sense? Well, I don't know what to say. Don't know how. Learn how. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. You might do it differently than other people. You might do it through a pamphlet. You might, you know, there's, there's, there's different ways. But ask God to use you to reach someone for Christ. Just think of the difference that it would make in our church, just think of the difference it would make in our community, just think of the difference it would make in our world if each one of us would win someone to Christ this year. Number six, encourage someone in the faith. Bless your brothers and sisters in Christ with a smile, a positive comment, or a gift. <laughs> you know, Sometimes Christians are accused of being the, the of sucking lemons, being a bunch of sour pusses. Where's the joy in the Lord of that? You know, a, a lot of times church people are, 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 are known for being critical. I don't like this. I don't like that. Where's the joy of the Lord? Where's the encouragement? Where's the positivity come from knowing that I have been redeemed from an eternity in hell and I have been given the opportunity to spend eternity in heaven? Encourage someone in the faith. Protect your brothers and sisters when they are attacked by Satan, by unbelievers, or even by other believers. And number seven, put your priorities in order. Put your priorities in order. Make sure to keep God at the top of your priority list, not just in words, but also in daily life. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. But I'm so busy. 
I know my priorities are out of whack. I'm sure God will understand. I just, I just, I just love it when somebody says, I'm sure God will understand. Because he will. He does. He understands that your priorities are out of whack and you don't really love him first of all. Yes, he understands. You don't fool him. I don't fool him. God will understand. Get real. If God is first in our life, he'll be first in everything that we do. Now 2023 is almost past. Last year is old, maybe it's comfortable. Next year is new and uncertain and scary, but ready or not, it's time to move on to move forward into 2024. So take a brief glance back at 2023. Repent of your past sins. Thank God for his blessings, but then let God lead you into 2024. Let God lead you through 2024. If we do that, 2024 will be a great year, independent of our circumstances. This morning, and I know... uh, or maybe a little bit long, but I want to make use of the altar, front steps. And did you notice we, we, we conveniently left a few pews open for your use this morning? And I'm going to invite you to come and pray. To end a year in prayer. Come with boldness before the throne of grace and receive mercy to help in time of need. Come to seek guidance. Come to intercede for your loved ones. Come to confess your sins. Come to ask the Holy Spirit to empower you for service in God's kingdom. Don't be a Christian sissy worried about what somebody will think if you come and use the altar. Really? Listen to his voice. If he says, I want to meet you, God wants to meet you. God wants to connect with you. If he says, I want to meet you right here in the pews, you stay right there in that pew. If he says, I want to meet you at the altar, come to the altar. Don't judge those who don't come or those who do. It's not up to you. But we're going to invite you to come as as the worship team leads in the closing song. Come and pray. Come and meet God. Meet Him where He tells you to meet Him. In the pew at the altar steps. End a year talking to God. Twenty twenty three was kinda of difficult. I'm sure for a lot of you maybe. You know uh just stepped away from the ministry at Decatur Church of God and my mom went for surgery she never came out she never came home she went to receive her glory and my dad passed away a week later he went to receive his glory but I will always sing of the goodness. 
I hope God. I'm going to ask Chelsea to take this. Let's worship at the throne. Go ahead. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. We know that you've been faithful over the past year, and we know that you're going to be faithful 
throughout the coming year. Thank you for meeting with us. Thank you for inviting us to your throne. Thank you for allowing us to come and bring our, our concerns, our petitions, for bringing our praise and our gratitude to you. And now we pray that you would go before us, that you would protect us, that you would guide us, that you would, yes, correct us when necessary. And Lord, that you would bless us in 2024 with your presence. May we love you more than we've ever loved you before. May we love as we have been loved. And now, Lord, we ask that you would dismiss us with your blessing. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Happy New Year. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did. He did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but Jesus.